only flexing here at 12, to 12 times freeze. <laughs> 12 o'clock, yeah. 12 o'clock show. Here at 12 Freeze Gym in Paddington with Dominic Ingall. Obviously spoke to you alongside Kel Brook, but now I want to speak to you about some of the other fighters in the gym. Firstly, Kid Galahad, Barry Howard, of course, got an eliminator for the world title against Claudio Marrero, just in case you forget his name again. That's Claudio, not Barry. Um, what do you make of him, and, and is this a, an eliminator or a final eliminator? Where will Barry be if he gets through this one? No, this is a final eliminator. If he wins, this is obviously back in for the uh, managers' challenge for the IBF title, which at the minute is held by Josh Warrington. So that's where he'll be. We're not looking past this fight. It's a tough fight. We had the option of this fight um, a couple of years ago, to be honest, and it never materialised. But he's a dangerous kid. He's lost a few, um, but he's a tough, he can punch, he's a southpaw, he's awkward. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a really tough fight uh, for King Galahad. We've also got Liam Williams, who got probably the best win of his career recently in destroying uh, Atlantis Fox, who you've had a bit of back and forth with since on Twitter. Wouldn't be surprised if he ends up relocating to Sheffield and coming under your wing. He seems to have some sympathy with your criticism of him, which was kind of refreshing to see. Uh, Atlantis Fox. Well, in the messages going back and forth, he seemed to at least partially agree with you. I, I put messaging out on social media and half of the time, unless it's to do with me playing guitar or cooking, I don't really read it. So I put one or two up, but I don't know. Look, he's a good fighter and he was, re he was ranked number one with the WBO and Liam was number seven. And, you know, any guy at six foot five, he's, he's dangerous and he was well rated. And the one thing I'll say about him, even when Liam Williams was having him all over the place and clipping him, he always, he came to fight. You know, he climbed off the floor and he carried on. Whereas usually you'll see him fall him, but he didn't. He, he put on a good show, but I don't think he expected uh, what he got off Liam Williams. I thought he was going to be able to control it, and, and he didn't. And, you know, Liam Williams had a great game plan, and fair play to him, probably because he was in the gym for so long since his last fight. He was he was just like uh, chomping at the bit. He, he was like a, a rabid dog, to be honest. And, like, if, you know, if you've just seen some of the spars, we had some terrific sparring with some tall guys, light heavyweights, uh, super middleweights, and Liam Williams, you know, he was knocking lumps off him. So it, the, the result wasn't a surprise, and he was a quality operator, Fox. I think he's, he's, he's still got uh, some time in the game, but he's got to have to think about what he does. For me, he didn't use his advantages of the height and reach. He, he, he could fight on the inside for a big guy, but he didn't need to. And I think that's where his mistake was made. Andre next, or is there going to be a mark in time fight in between? What's the latest there? You know, I just don't need to be dealing with the ins and outs of next fights because it's, you know, you know, boxing as it is. I said to Liam Williams, Liam Williams when he first came to me, the first fight he had with Boxing Wales on an MTK show, the first round the rope snapped. And I thought, if this fight stops now and gets abandoned, Liam Williams is probably never, we're never going to see him again. And luckily, uh, the good old's managed to fix the ropes. I said to Liam Williams, make sure you knock this kid out in the next round because that rope's going to snap. And he hit him, knocks him out, hit the rope, and the rope snapped, and the, the fight was stopped. And from then on, I said, look, just take any fight what comes. It doesn't matter whether, you know, the world beaters or not. Whatever's put in front of you, just beat the kids. Don't be looking for world title fights. Just beat what's put in front of you. And that's where it's about momentum. And he's had a great 12 months, you know, finishing off with that fantastic fight. He's put himself back in the mix. He looks a different fight. He's not a different fight. He's just a more control fighter, thinking about what he's doing. And he's got a bit of, you know, he's got ambition now and motivation to do it. So I'm pleased for him that he's finding his way. He's only 27. He's got time. And hopefully the opportunities will come. But it needs to be a good opportunity. It needs to be, you know, when he's ready. And, you know, it'd be great if he could do it in England. He's not going up against it abroad. We, news broke this week that you've got a new addition to the gym, uh, Robbie Davis Jr., who came up just short against Lewis Ritson in his last fight. Big step for him because he's known to like his, not home comforts as such, but he's very close with his family. He likes staying local to Liverpool. He's a Liverpool hero, if you like. Or what convinced him to make this move from your own discussions with him? I don't know because I didn't really have many discussions with him. I know his manager, Neil Marsh. And, you know, Neil's a nice fella. And uh, over the years, we've worked with Neil Marsh. And he was the first promoter to put Killer, Kid Galahad on, on his bill when Barry just came off his, his ban and you know I said yeah I'll do your favour Dominic I'll put him on Barry was finding it hard to get work he put him on and that's what started it all off so he, he actually contacted me first I think he'd also watched the progress of, of Liam Williams and realised how well he was doing and he'd moved away from home but you know I remember Robbie just for, for his stuff on social media the, the hair I used to be intrigued with his hair um, because you can't I, have a similar style I can't grow it but he always reminds me I, mean, I don't ever watch the Ari Enfield with the Scousers with the <laughs> You know, and all, all lock calm down, calm down. All, all lock stuck two smoking barrels, and I used to think, oh, Robbie's got that kind of hair, and then he had it all cut off. But he's a good fight, and I think he's another one. 
uh, who's uh, very capable, but he, he just loves to have a tear up and entertain the crowd. And you can do that, but not by getting as involved. And I think, you know, he's only really had that Ritz and lock on his, loss on his record. He got beat uh, by the guy we had, he had the revenge win against, uh, he avenged the win. So for me, he's only really lost one. And I think he could have beat Ritson. Ritson's a tough kid. Obviously, he him in his hometown, but I think... I'm not saying under me he would have done it, but I think there's a way to beat Ritson. You've got to have a definite plan, and the way to beat him is not to have a tear up because he's going to beat you every day of the week, and I think Robbie's a bit better than that. Robbie can bo actually box. So hopefully we can do a similar job on him that we've done with Liam Williams. You know, he, he, he questioned a few people. He, he, he got in contact with Kid Galahad on social media and, and Liam Williams and just asked what I was like as a trainer and everything else because obviously, uh, you know... My they obviously lied. Well, whatever they did, you know, the results speak for themselves. I mean, you know, people get their impressions of whatever they want to, whatever they see on, on social media. That's fair enough. But when it comes to business and training, then we're, we're down to we're down to what needs to be done. And uh, you know, he's, he's over he's over this week training. Give him a couple of uh, things to do. I had a talk to him about how he's trained in the past, and you know, he's, he's they do the boxing training, but they try and do things themselves. They try and do their own runs and their own SNC, and whether they're cutting costs or I don't know what they're doing. Sometimes they're just like doing every trying to cover everything and it's got to be a bit more focused and a bit more channeled in what they do because they're, they're away from home they've got families and everything else they don't you don't need to spend hours and hours in the gym you need to spend maybe you know 90 minutes to two hours you know uh, 120 minutes a, a day that's it and that includes your warm up your stretching down you don't need to do a lot if you're keeping on it and he's a, he's a fit kid he's disciplined and i think it's just a case of channeling him in the right direction hopefully 2020 is going to be a good year for him as 2019 was for Liam Williams. Great stuff.